left with brown for lead one, red and black. Red and black will go to lead two. Got a two pull switch here. Switch actually comes through the slot here in the front. It will be perfect for wiring this up. We'll take one lead to here, one lead to here. That gives us our two separate 120 feeds, and then common up here. So the two. 220, the only difference you're going to have basically one, uh, two 110 volt feeds going to two separate spots here. So 110 here, 110 here, and a common makes 220. We've got a two pull switch here. Which actually comes through the slot here in the front. This will be perfect for wiring this up. We'll take one lead to here, one lead to here. That gives us our two separate 120 feeds, and then common up here. So the two, 220, the only difference you're going to have basically one, uh, two 110 volt feeds going to. Two separate spots here, so 110 here, 110 here, and a common makes 220. Okay, so ran out of storage there. I'm not sure what we missed. So so far I've got connections made here. This is the one that's going to be going to the compressor motor. We've got one 120 line here, one 120 line here, 110, 110, whatever, and common up here. This is going to jump over to the 220 volt receptacle there. Uh, common one, one 110 volt feed here and one here. So, I'm going to put this back into the box here uh, and then we'll shut the power down and tie into the receptacle. All right, so we're ready to get into the receptacle, uh, tie into it, switch. I did manage to pull a broken piece out of the back there. It wasn't one to move all the way. Seems to be good now. Hopefully it still works. Uh, I guess we'll find out. But I need to kill the power in here before we go messing with this receptacle. Always, always important to be sure that there is no live feed coming up here. Even though we've got the power off to the garage, we want to make absolute sure that it is off. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. I can't be certain we're making great contact, so. I'm going to take the cover off and we'll check it again. With the cover off. Okay. We appear to be safe. Don't ever go messing with anything electrical if you're not going to make sure that the power is off before you do so. 
I'll turn it back on just so we can show you here real quick what you'll see if the power is live. We're showing 241 volts if you can see that. From one hot to the ground we will show 120. From the other hot to the common or ground we will show 120. From hot to hot you will show your 240. We'll go ahead and shut that back off. And again, now that it's off, we'll double check just to be safe. No residual voltage. So we should be clear here. What we want to do. just tie into these lines so all I'm doing is taking these loose feeding one of my wires into it with the existing wire and tightening it back down And I don't advise trying this if you don't know exactly what you're doing. You need to understand which ones are supposed to be what poles, what you know, what's going to be hot, what's not. If you don't know what you're doing, just play it safe and call an electrician. Crusty. Okay, so I'll put the cover back on. Come on. So now Power is off. I'm going to isolate these wires. So we can turn the power back on to the garage. So I want to test inside the box to make sure we've got good contact. Basically, I just want to make sure that the uh, power is getting through. Make sure the connection is good. So there's 120. There's 120. And there's 240. Now these down here should have nothing. They have nothing. I have no fuses in, so power will not get through even if we turn the switch on. But I'm going to turn it on to see if we feed to here. I got 240 there. We'll need to throw some fuses in there. Um, before we do that, I'm definitely going to go ahead and hook the motor up and get everything ready. So we brought the motor, pressure pump over. All that's left to do at this point is to connect the leads. So I just realized that I don't have a connection for the common here. I have a feeling that the violet is supposed to be the common, not just going nowhere. Either that or our green and yellow here. So we will have to figure that out. Uh, in the meantime, we can hook up two leads. So 
Got lead one and two hooked up. Now we just need to figure out what the common is supposed to be. So I'll grab some fuses and do a little research here. Okay, so turns out I was wrong. Apparently, we don't need the common, which is strange. But okay. So, lead one, lead two are connected. Common is just going to be capped off for now. Even though, you know, under normal operation, the common, if everything's wired right, common's not going to be carrying any power. So, but we'll cap, cap it off for safety. We'll show, they're now wired up on the 220 volt. I'll turn it on and see what happens. So we'll see how that does. Uh, all that's left to do now is hook it up to the tank, see if it runs until it pressures up and doesn't shut down for thermal overload. Hopefully we're good to go. Um, thank you for watching. If you like this, uh, you want to see more stuff like this, let me know. Um, it's just kind of, you know, typical day-to-day -day things I'm taking care of. I'm going to try to film it for you guys. If there's anything particular you'd like to see, I can try to make it a priority. Just leave me a comment. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Please subscribe to be notified of new videos like this. Turn the bell on, notifications, all that good stuff. And God bless. Okay, so I ended that in a bad spot. Uh, all I did was show you wiring it up to the motor itself. Uh, it's very, very important to note. Uh, this could be pretty dangerous if I, if you didn't know any better and I didn't tell you. Uh, very important to note, this needs to be wired through the pressure switch on the tank. Wiring it straight to the motor like that. If you run it like that, it's just going to pump and pump and pump and pump until you overpressure or it shuts down. It's too hot, can't handle the pressure. What you have to do, instead of just feeding these leads straight to the motor, where they're going right now, that was just uh, that was just me making sure it was actually going to work. Um, what we have to do. Is bring these into this pressure switch here and then feed back out to the motor from there. Uh, what this pressure switch does, uh, you've got a feed side, you've got a switched side. What it will do is it will run that motor until the tank pressure reaches a specific set point PSI which in this case is, uh, I think I've got it set about 120 PSI. So it's gonna run the motor as long as it doesn't trip on thermal overload like it's been doing. It's gonna run the motor until the pressure inside the tank reaches 125 PSI, which is gonna kick this switch here and shut the power off to the motor until it drops back down below, I believe, 60. Somewhere around 60 PSI, it'll actually turn it back on. So that's what actually keeps your tank pressure where you want it. Tells the motor when to run, when to shut off. Very, very critical step here that I almost missed entirely for you. That could have been bad. So, we'll go ahead and hook this up while we're at it so that I can see for sure 
if this is going to do better on 220 or 240. Now, I like to use these different wire terminals, you know, spade bits, round uh, spade terminals, round ter ring terminals, whatever. I like to, they look nicer, they're cleaner, they're safer, keep things together better. It's just a good idea to use them if you're going to do electrical work like this. Invest in them. They're not expensive. You can get a whole a huge assortment of them for a very, fairly cheap price. Uh, you're not going to break the bank by getting these things and working safely. Plus they look It'll look a lot nicer when it's done. Everything's all professional looking. Good wire terminations. You don't have wires just kind of strung in here and wrapped around bolts and nuts. And yeah, I just that doesn't look good. Plus, if you ever go into the electrical industry you get connections that look like that um, let's just say it's probably not going to go over too well with your boss so always good idea to do things right the first time whether anybody's going to see it or not I mean, let's just do it right I like the I like the ring terminals, especially over here, the feed side, because I know they're not going to come off. There's no way they can come off. I do like these uh, forked terminals as well. Um, they're more. These are a lot more suited for connections that you know you might be taking off, putting back on from time to time. Um, I've had to work on this a little bit lately, so I had those on there just so it'd be easier to get to. When we're connecting the two leads to the motor here, it doesn't actually matter uh, which lead goes to which wire. You see I've got white going to the uh, red and blue, red and black, and the brown lead is coming from the black line. It doesn't actually matter. The only time, see with these hooked up, we saw on the other side, uh, to reverse direction, you're switching the orange and red wires. So it doesn't matter. It's going to work the same either way as long as you've got the rest of the wires connected properly. It's going to go the same direction. The only time it matters is in industry. If you've got three phase power, you've got three leads coming in, you've got three connections to the motor or to the motor starter, but that's, that's a whole other story. Um, it will run no matter how you hook those three leads up, it doesn't matter what order they're in, it will run the motor. The only thing is, if the motor's turning the wrong direction, you just have to swap two of the leads. It doesn't matter which lead you swap, swap two of the leads, motor rotates the opposite direction. It's just based on the phasing of a three phase, it's a different setup. So it doesn't matter how we hook these up, it's going to work as long as they're hooked up. So. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Everything's connected to the switch. There we go. We're already mostly pressured up here, so I'm going to have to bleed some air out to get an accurate, an accurate read here. I'll shut her down. I'm going to have to bleed some air out to see if it's actually going to run and fill it all the way up without shutting down like it has been doing so hopefully it works out so thanks again